Good afternoon, beloveds, inside our Conscious Conservative Media Network. I want to welcome everyone who will be able to tune in live to our first My Beloved Women Sunday workshop. We're going to have a really great time today. We're going to talk about some of the controversial issues that are happening in the conservative space. Um, but as always, I want to bring forth a teaching that will bless your entire soul uh, I'm, again, I send a welcome to everyone who will tune in live. I see my media network director here. So she's going to uh, probably post out some tweets just to invite others to join. Listen, if you are brand new to the Conscious Conservative Media Network, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Coach Felicia Killings, the founder and CEO of the Felicia Killings Foundation, the Conscious Conservative Movement, and our sister organizations and programs. One of our programs is designed to be an empowering community for uh, women, no matter the age. We do have a, a girls program coming up later on this year. I'll talk more about that. Um, but for the most part, we're trying to help help women create um, really powerful lives and, and teaching them how to bounce back from hardships. More specifically, our ministry is designed to show women how to flourish in business, ministry, motherhood, and marriage. And so if you are, uh, if you're a male and you're watching, you might want to invite your wife or your sister, your mom to tune in, whatever it might be. Uh, these Sunday workshops are obviously going to be available for those to watch in the general public, but we have a wonderful premium space inside this, um, this media network where I will dive into a lot more details related to the social, political, and economic sphere. So for example, uh, starting this Monday, I'm going to launch the teaching on how to uh, help women in terms of finding their suitable. We'll be talking about love and marriage. We'll be talking about um, what is God's true design for marriage and, and how women today can prepare themselves. Um, relationships have ironically become a really popular topic in Twitter class. And I, obviously, I never imagined myself talking about it because I like to focus on, you know, certain elements like business and whatnot. But um, it, uh, my teachings have been well received. And uh, one of the things I share, and it's all going to play into today's teaching, one of the things I share is I am not a relationship expert. I don't, I didn't go to school for it. I don't have none of that expertise. I don't have data, none of that stuff. All I have are the scriptures. All I have are observations from watching my parents and how they ministered to uh, to me and my sister and teaching us how to become wives and what to look for in a husband and dot, dot, dot. So I just share the wisdom that I received and also uh, helping others to develop and cultivate that. So we're going to dive into a lot more of those teachings as we progress. But in order for you to gain access to that empowerment, you need to become a premium member of my beloved women's ministry space. So anyways, I'll talk more about that uh, later on in today's workshop. Um, but what I want to do before we begin, as always, I welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, always have your way in these teachings. Always uh, feel free to deliver the message that you want so lives are changed for the better. So today happens to be Pentecost Sunday. For those who uh, celebrate Pentecost, uh, I celebrate with you. Pentecost represents the 50 days after the resurrection. This is a time period where the disciples went up into that upper room and they waited for the promise which Jesus gave to them. He told them to tarry in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes. And uh, ever since that time, the Holy Spirit has made himself available. He has manifested himself to those who are willing to receive him. And so I celebrate with with you. Uh, it's ironic that we're talking a lot about politics and we're talking a lot about the power structure that we see happening today. And I, I this morning when I woke up, I, rem I reminisced about the book of Acts and actually as Jesus talking in the latter part of Luke, where uh, we see his disciples and they're like, you know, we, they knew he was getting ready to leave. They knew something was going to happen. 
and they became very distraught. And so one of the disciples asked him, Jesus, at this time, are you going to restore power? I'm paraphrasing. And they wanted to have political power. They wanted to have social power. They wanted to be able to combat the Roman Empire that was systematically persecuting them. And that was not the purpose for Jesus coming the first time. The purpose was not for him to come and overthrow the Roman Empire. His purpose was not to uh, dismantle <laughs> that particular system. Instead, his purpose was to come and bring the kingdom message directly to the people. And so as they are inquiring about this power, Jesus tells him, but hold on, wait a minute, you will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And this power is going to make you an effective witness of the gospel, of the kingdom message, which I preached. I'm paraphrasing what Jesus shared. And so I brought that to this attention because when we're talking about politics, we're talking about this power struggle between how some folks view uh, the way of living versus others. We have conservative views who want to hold, we have individuals who want to hold on to traditional values such as marriage between a man and a woman. Um, we have those who want to conserve what traditional values are when it comes to identifying oneself as a woman. And then you have those who are more loose or progressive or more liberal, I guess you could say in their viewpoints where it's like, well, everything goes, everything is copacetic. There are no standards. There are no, you know, whatsoever. Everything is just whatever. And these two ideas are conflicting with one another. And again, we see folks who are vying for this kind of power. There is this power struggle. And so the question is always who's going to win, right? Like who has the better ideas? Who has the better ideology? Who has the better thinking or belief system that's going to help ourselves, our families, and our communities truly thrive. And we on this side believe conservative values do that because traditional uh, values help us conserve the very things that God had established in the beginning. And this is, again, it's gonna play into our teaching about what it means to be a woman. So as we're seeing this power struggle, um, it reminded me once again of that period where the disciples asked Jesus, like, basically, when are you going to give us this kind of power so that we can defeat this empire that's persecuting us? And Jesus had to, sh you know, shake him up a little bit and say, that's not the power you should be seeking. And that's my admonition to all of us. That's not the power we ought to seek. We should not be seeking man-made power or political power in the sense that it's going to somehow make us be something special, if that makes sense. There is a greater power that we have available to us today. And if we're willing and obedient, if we tap into this power, we can become whatsoever we desire. We can get to the place to where we access the mind of God concerning all the things that we want, all the things that we desire, all the things that we need. The way we do that is through access to God's mind. And the scriptures teach us that to know the Holy Spirit is to know the mind of God. So this is why I always talk about him in Twitter class. This is why each time when I give a warning or if I say something's coming, I tell you exactly who is giving me this insight because I have learned over the years how to tap into the mind of God. And even whenever I talk about controversial issues, such as obviously, I don't understand how defining women became controversial, but that's 2022 for you today. But even when I talk about these controversial issues, I always ask the Holy Spirit, give me a creative way to explain what's taking place so that the people today can appreciate your laws, your values, your beliefs, your precepts, dot, dot, dot. And so that's what we're going to talk about uh, today. So hopefully you have about 30 minutes to um to enjoy this presentation, to enjoy this teaching, because I know that it's going to be absolutely empowering for you. Now, as always, I want to make sure I stick with my notes so that I can give you all the insight that is uh, prevalent. And um, 
so yeah, let's go ahead and start with this. So th earlier this week in conservative Twitter, conservative politics, um, a prominent conservative voice, uh, his name is Matt Walsh. He is a part of the Daily Wire tribe. And uh, he premiered this new film, which is called What is a Woman? And of course, it sparked a lot of controversy. Those on the left had a field day with it. Um, he shares some of the clips of his film, which I actually thought was quite brilliant. And to be honest, if Matt Walsh can just stick to that and keep his mouth off of black folks, <laughs> I probably would like his content a lot more, but I digress. So anyways, he brought up, um, he had this film. It, it, like I haven't seen the whole thing, but just the clips were quite interesting. And he went around to different cultures. He went around to different groups. He went around to politicians, men, women, whatever, and asked them, what does it mean to be a woman? Now, one of the clips is when he went to an African tribe and he started to ask them about the uh, transgender ideology. And so if you haven't seen that one, you should definitely check it out because it was quite funny. It's, it's funny in the sense that in the Western world, which is supposed, it's supposed to be so advanced, right? It's supposed to be so civilized. It is supposed to be so much better, right? Than the other civilizations, the other worlds, the, th the third world countries. We're supposed to be better than that. And yet we have to ask ourselves these stupid questions like, what does it mean to be a woman? When clearly people <laughs> who are just more sensible and may not have as much wealth as our country or as the Western countries, they already know what it means to be a woman. They already know what it means to be a man. This is not a conversation that they are having. This is technically and literally first world problems when we are having to ask these stupid questions. This tells you how completely spoiled we are. When we have too much time on our hands to have conversations about what it means to be a woman. But let's let's continue. Let's move on. And so uh, this that film of his explored um, what it means to be a woman. I really do want to check it out. So that's probably going to be the first and only time I purchased something from the Daily Wire. Um, but it raised it raised a lot of different conversations. So you have folks who are a part of the transgender agenda. And their idea is that gender is basically fluid. You know, if you up and decide today, let's say you're a biological man and you decide today, you know what, I'm going to be a woman. Well, then the rest of society is supposed to accept that you are now a woman. Uh, there was, and, and I have an issue with the, the agenda for various reasons, because for decades, for centuries, women have struggled to find a place in this man's world, to find a place where their voice can be heard, to find a place where their votes actually matter, only to have that usurped by this faux patriarchy, which wants to redefine what it means to be a woman. See, somebody just, a man can't just wake up and say, I am a woman today, give me all the rights that come with being a woman. Well, you, do you bleed every month? Do you have a period? Do you have a uterus? Do you have like, there are certain things that we can actually pay attention to that can help us answer this very simple question. What does it mean to be a woman? So whenever I do my teachings, I'm not interested in complicating the matter. I'm not even interested in triggering folks to that point. But sometimes the truth just does that. So I want to talk to you about what it means to be a woman from this biblical, godly perspective. And I know some of us are probably like, we get this, we already know, we understand, because those of us on the conservative side, this is not a struggle for us. But I do want you to be empowered with enough knowledge and enough sources so that when you come across individuals, and you may even come across it with a teacher or, you know, your, your child's uh, uh, friends, whatever it might be. There's a way for you to answer this question that will be empowering 
It won't be degrading to the other person. It will be empowering, not just for women, but for other folks to see like, okay, we understand why we should not just let this thing run rapid. So I define a woman as an extension of God. A woman is an extension of God designed to be a help meet to man. Whenever we want to define something, we have to go to its original source. So if I were to ask you, you know, what does it mean? What does, what's the definition of a door, right? You would go to perhaps Webster's Dictionary to find the source, uh, the origin of that particular word. When we go to the original, this helps us to have a better understanding of the overall meaning and context of a particular word. So when I'm defining a woman, I'm going to the original source. I'm going to go to God himself. I'm going to go to the Holy Spirit, who again conveys to us the mind of God. I'm going to ask him, based upon his word and his precepts, what do you mean by a woman? So if you go into Genesis chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, you will read for yourself. You'll see for yourself that when God created all of nature, the worlds, the universe, all of that, he then got to the point in day six where he said, and let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness. That word man does not just mean male. It also means male and female. He's just talking about man, the body, the human being. And then he said, and let them have dominion over the earth. So in God's mind, he already had two genders, right? He already had male, he already had female in mind, but he didn't create us in the same manner. We read from the scriptures that when God formed Adam, he formed him from the dust or the dirt of the ground. So he went to work, he created him from the earth, then breathed into that man the breath of life. The scriptures then tell us that from man came woman. Paul talks about in one of his books how woman was created for man. Now, if you say this to the anti-man uh, female Twitter accounts, they'll have, they'll have a conniption. They will have a complete conniption when you tell them that woman was created for man. Why? Because they don't believe it. They don't like it. They don't like the understanding uh, or the concept that a woman is somehow dependent or linked to a man. And yet that is exactly what we are, right? So it says that a woman, uh, uh, a woman was created for man. And again, if you go back to Genesis, you'll understand why. She was created for a particular purpose, to help that man practice dominion in the earth. There is something that women have that a man, a male human cannot have and cannot do. Again, this should be simple for us, but for some reason we have to do this teaching on what it means to be a woman in 2022, because nowadays the doctrines are becoming so convoluted, so distorted that sometimes the children will start to entertain the crazy. They'll start to entertain thoughts that go contrary to their own natural convictions. So again, this is no shot at anybody. This is no uh, uh, trying to bash anyone. But when you ask the question, what, is it, what does it mean to be a woman? Well, you have to be ready for the original answer. Now, whether or not people want to believe the original answer, that's, that's completely on them. But this is the original answer. We are an extension of God. We are not just a, 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 a second class citizen. We are not inferior to the male human. We are an extension of God created to be a helpmeet. Now, a woman is a biological counterpart to the man male. If we just say, if we replace in the scriptures where it says man, 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 and just add the word or replace it with the word human, then it'll help make sense. But the human being has either a male or female attached to it. It is one or the other. 
right? It's not both. And this is not rocket science. This is, I'm just kind of like, Lord, why do I have to teach this? But we'll go with the spirit anyways. So a woman is a man. In other words, she is a human, but she carries something in her body, in her biological being that is useful for the social unit, for the union that helps both to practice dominion. Now in Western society, they want to challenge this notion. They want to suggest that any human can up and decide one day to transition, to be whatever it is that they want to be for that day. They will use science, they will use sur surgeries, they will use whatever they want in order to try and adjust what God has already originally created. So for example, today, if a biological man wants to become a woman or what he deems is a woman, then he can go get surgery, pay an unseen amount of money for it to try and get the women parts attached to his male biological body. Now, the question we have to ask is, if a man, a male body, let me clarify, if a male body removes the male parts and attaches the female body's parts to his male body, does that make that human male a woman? The answer is no. So in this, again, it makes sense to me, but I said, Holy Spirit, I need you to give me uh, um, an example to help illustrate this point. So let's take, for instance, let's talk about cars, okay? So let's say I have a BMW. I love BMWs. They're, those are gorgeous cars, right? All the parts of the BMW belong to that particular car, that particular make and model. It is very specific. I can't up and decide to go to a Jeep dealer and tell the Jeep dealer, I want you to take all the parts of your Jeep and put it into this BMW model. And then I want you to convert my BMW into a Jeep. They're gonna look at me like I'm insane. They're just gonna say, man, why don't you just buy a Jeep if you want a Jeep? No, 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 I want you to turn my BMW into a Jeep. Well, ma'am, that doesn't make sense. We can't do it. It's ridiculous that, no, no, because according to the same logic, the same logic of transgenderism, you should be able to do this without any issue. And my BMW should be able to function just like a Jeep because you're going to make it into a Jeep. You're going to take all the parts and transition it. Does that make my BMW an authentic Jeep? Can I legitimately sell my BMW and call it a Jeep? No, you cannot do that, right? These things are very, very simple. In like manner, you cannot take a womb or a uterus from a woman, from a female human, and put it into a male body and expect the male's body to function just as the female body. It will not happen naturally. There will be severe complications. This is not natural. So to assume that a man, a male in that body can automatically become a female, just by nature of some surgical procedures, this negates what it actually means to be a woman. Can that male body that now has female parts, can that male body now all of a sudden receive the male seed in the womb naturally? Can it carry that seed into full term? Can it birth that baby into the earth? No, these are things that make absolute sense to those of us who understand you just don't have to tamper with everything. 
You don't have to tamper with the laws of nature. You don't have to tamper with the ways of God. Like if you want to walk around saying that you're a female, knowing you are a biological male, that's fine for you. But you, the desire and the push to erase womanhood, this is my problem with them, to erase womanhood after we are <laughs> have gone through so much to affirm our place in this man's world, to now have it being usurped by this faux patriarchy. This is a problem that we see taking place. So biologically speaking, it's impossible for these things to happen. It's impossible for these transfer of body parts of male body parts and female body parts to interject in the opposite bodies and to expect them to function as naturally as they would if they came fresh out the womb. These things, it's impossible for it to happen. So yes, when we're talking about what does it mean to be a woman, it includes all of these elements. It's not just, uh, you know, I don't wake up every day and just say, you know, I, I'm a woman. No, I just know I am. I have the body parts. I have the internal organs like the womb and the uterus. I have all of these things that tell me I am a woman. Now, some folks who have uh, played around with the with the social structure, right? During the 50s, during that time period, folks assumed that being a woman meant you stayed at home, you cooked all the time, you cleaned, you were naked. What's the phrase? Uh, you belong in the kitchen and the bedroom. And you know, like they had those traditional roles that would be ascribed to a woman. And for a lot of folks, that's what it meant to be a woman. If you look at the 1950s shows like I Love Lucy and uh, all these, like Leave it to Beaver, which I, I love those shows, right? It will have you thinking that uh, the meaning of a woman is to be that stay at home wife or, you know, the completely subservient person in the household who never questions what her husband says or th that even that is not the meaning of a woman. You know, when we talk about, or at least when I talk about traditional women versus modern women, sometimes modern women assume that traditional women don't want to work. We don't want to, you know, get out there and assert ourselves. And I'm like, that's not what it means to be a traditional woman. If you go and look at the book of Proverbs chapter 31, you'll see that a traditional woman who loves her husband and loves her children, she's very industrious. She loves to have business. She's involved in real estate. She's involved in politics. She does not have any limits except, <laughs> here we go, except her ability to impregnate her own self. She needs the seed. She is a carrier and the nurturer of that man's seed. She helps to expand the social empire. A man cannot do that by himself. And so, again, when we're talking about what it means to be a woman, we always have to go to the original. We always have to go to the source. People can, even, even these folks who want to contend against the more traditional values, all you have to do is ask them, where do you derive your source? Where do you derive your information? Because nothing, we don't have something just being created out of nothing. So they got their ideas from a place. Ask them, where did you get this from? Where did you get this knowledge or insight from? Why is it that you believe the way you do? You had to have gotten it somewhere. And if you can go to their own source and you can tear down their sources, they have no shot in beating you on this battlefield of ideas. Nobody can contend with me about what it means to be a woman because I have no problem quoting my source. I have no problem saying I tap into the mind of God to understand what certain things mean. Go ask people their source. Wait for them to come back. Because if they can't come back with something, then they'll generally throw out insults. <laughs> They'll typically, you know, try and make you feel some type of way about your own beliefs, but really it's them feeling inferior because they cannot answer your very basic question. 
That's why I said I, I thought Matt Walsh's video or the clips that I saw were brilliant. Because when he asked a simple question like, what does it mean to be a woman? What is the truth behind it? They could not give him a source. This was just, you know, everything goes, everything's copacetic. Well, that's real funny because, you know, as, as we approach this election season, ironically, these people are going to tell us that women, especially black women, are responsible for saving American democracy. Well, I thought we were birthing people just a few months ago. You didn't want to respect us as women back then. But now, now that you need some votes, we are women again. You see, when you need something political from us, that's when you start to respect our womanhood. There was this other tweet that I shared yesterday. And um, these women were talking about, it was Tiffany Cross, I think that's her last name. She was on her show talking to other women of color, whatever, I hate that phrase. And they were talking about how white women are responsible or at fault for the decrease of American freedoms. I can only speculate that they're talking about abortion and, you know, because a lot of white women vote Republican and Republicans are very much so anti-abortion or so they say they like diet abortion. That's another story. Um, and so I, I'm guessing that's what they're alluding to. But um, you see what I'm saying? Like when it's convenient for this other side, all of a sudden gender is not fluid. All of a sudden, no, no, you're a woman. No, no, you help save the uh, uh, the democracy. Like you do all these great things, black women. But when it comes to the other agenda, all of a sudden we lose our womanhood. We lose our essence. We have to be diminished in order to be a, a part of their whatever. These are the issues that progressivism pushes out there. See, I, I did a tweet and said, you know, when you're progressive, you can't even be intellectually honest. One of your philosophies or one of your ways of thinking is always going to conflict with the other. Some folks will be anti-gun, uh, anti-Second Amendment and say that, you know, guns cause murders and, you know, you, you got to be anti-murder and Jesus was against murder. But they're in the same breath, be pro-abortion. You cannot, when you're in that progressive mindset, you cannot be intellectually honest. And in the same manner, they cannot be intellectually honest when it comes to womanhood. They can't even appreciate what it is that we have done and the sacrifices we have made in order to get to where we are today in this Western society. And now we have to have that. We have to have our legs cut from under us for an agenda because a man up and decides he's going to be a woman. You know, the first time I saw um, Caitlyn Jenner, I'll respect, you know, her, uh, his, her desire for being called that name. The first time I saw the person get an award for being a woman, it ticked me off. Like, how do you get to be a woman for a, a day and get awarded for it? Meanwhile, all of these women are doing wonderful things, putting their necks on the line, fighting, doing everything right, and they can't get an award. This is, <laughs> they cannot make sense of uh, the, the, the conflicting messages. So all they do is continue the gaslight. All they do is continue to make it seem like, well, it's just white women who are causing our trouble or it's white straight male who, men who are doing it or this, that and the other. And then they don't even pay attention to the black women who are screaming at them and telling them, stop negating what God has made us to be. Stop diminishing our role and impact that we have made in this country. You see, we're going to continue talking about womanhood. Um, this upcoming week, I'm going to be chatting with more Black women to talk about why they feel the need to align with philosophies that are basically cutting away our essence. What is it about this place? the Democrat party, liberalism, progressivism, whatever, that's causing them to align with it when it when they have no problem diminishing 
our essence. These conversations are going to be essential, especially as we continue doing this effective outreach. Because if we don't have these conversations, then we leave it up to the crazies to make these decisions for us. Sunny says it all the time. I echo it quite frequently. Conservatives don't own anything. You don't own the culture. You don't own the schools. You don't own the unions. You don't own uh, anything of consequence. You just yell all the time on Twitter. And then you ask somebody to create a new social media uh, presence where you have this huge echo chamber. You're not actually engaging on this intellectual battlefield so that people understand, okay, there are different ideas here. Let's pay attention to them. When you're, when you're not present to present these competing messages, then you cannot even get mad at Disney or at Hulu or at whatever other entertainment network for pushing the agenda that goes against your core convictions. You can't even get mad at the school systems for teaching these, uh, uh, these ideas, this doctrine, because you're not there to compete. The, the idea of competition does not include you asking the government to expand itself. The competition of ideas doesn't mean you, you go and ask your government, your Republican government, to ban knowledge. Because again, the law of sowing and reaping is always in effect. If we push the idea of banning knowledge, they're going to push the idea of banning our knowledge. It, it, that's just how the law of sowing and reaping works. So the idea is to get in there and to compete. If I was to go toe to toe to someone who was uh, against somebody who was very much so pro the transgender agenda, the first thing I would ask is, where is your source? Where did you get this thinking from? You had to have come from somewhere. There has to be an original. And if they cannot give me an original, starting with something, it has to be an ancient text. It has to be either the scriptures, which are a form of ancient text. It has to be something ancient that talks about the very few first humans, the very first civilization. They have to take me to the original. And then they have to prove to me scientifically that this is natural. If they cannot do it, their arguments go completely out the door. Again, this is how you can battle this intellect. We don't have to use um, debased talking points or anything that's going to make the human itself feel less than or inferior. You don't have to degrade the human. You don't have to say things like, you know, they have a mental health issue and they're stu they're stupid or that. What you don't have to go that far. Just be intellectual. Show me your sources. I can show you mine. I can tell you exactly where I get it from, and I can show you evidence of his presence here. When you start to think that way, and, and then you're you're able to combat them on this battlefield. So. You know, these points, again, because I know my audience, I know I'm talking to beloveds who are already, you already get it. You could pretty much define what a woman is for yourself, but take it to that next level because you are entering these spaces where uh, uh, folks are making decisions for you that are going to affect the next generation. I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd have to have a teaching on what it means to be a woman. And yet here we are in 2022. Yet we can go to the African tribes. They know exactly what it means to be a woman. They know exactly what it means to be a man. We don't have to deal with any of that kind of gender confusion. It is very clear, but somehow, some way in the more civilized country, in the richest nation in the world, we are having this discussion. We're having this conversation. We want to get to the point where women today, and then I'm going to wrap it up. We need to get to the point where women today understand their purpose. And that's what I want to do and continue doing with my beloved women's ministry. When you know what a woman is, 
when you know your purpose as a woman, then you can function in your grace and in your calling. We, we dive into more of this in the premium um, space. Not every single woman is going to have the same exact calling. You, woman, could not do the job that I am doing today. Why? The vision was given to me. It wasn't given to you. And so God has given you a specific vision. It's only something that you can carry out. So a part of that vision included giving birth to the seed that was in your womb. A part of your vision includes marrying the man whom God has brought your way. A part of your vision includes setting up maybe that business that's going to help uh, uh, people in your area or creating that ministry that's very specific to people in your local republic. Identifying yourself, knowing who you are, knowing how God created you and the essence that comes with it allows you to accept the calling and the grace to manifest his assignment for you. And as you walk in that, you start to demonstrate leadership. You start to demonstrate power. You start to demonstrate all the wonders of God that come as a result of you being just who you are. You don't have to be a man in order to flex power. You don't have to look like a man in order to obtain power. You don't have to act like a man in order to obtain power. There is a special type of power that women have that men do not have. And so when you discover these things, when you discover this essence, it makes you proud to be whom God has called you to be. It makes you proud to be a woman. It makes you proud to be a mother. It makes you proud to be a wife. These various elements will be a blessing to you. They'll be a blessing to your social unit. They'll be a blessing to your community. These are the values that we have to teach. And these are the values that we have to conserve. These are the values that we have to impart into our daughters so that they are not confronted with the ideology that tells them that somehow they're inferior. Do you, do you understand how degrading it is for a woman, a girl to grow up thinking that the only way she can exercise power or have influence is if she becomes a man? What a slap in the face with this whole entire agenda. It is a slap in the face, again, to womanhood, to girlhood, to that particular essence, to tell a girl that she is not even complete or whole unless she becomes a different gender. Ooh, child. I need to drink some water on that one. Do you understand that the complete slap in the face to tell a girl that she is not even whole or complete unless she becomes the opposite sex? Child, the faux patriarchy. It's sending me. I cannot stand it. It is sending me. This is not something we should, um, you definitely don't want to accept it, but in that, in that lack of acceptance, let me clarify, you don't become hostile with people either. Don't get to the point where you, you become violent with your words or your actions towards these folks. You, you don't become that. You, you put on uh, um, the mind of Christ. How would Christ minister to folks? Now, one of the things that I don't do typically is I don't teach about homosexuality. I don't teach about transgenderism, except when they step and cross over into womanhood and they want to erase us, then I get active. Um, I don't teach about those things because I don't feel personally equipped to minister effectively in that area. There are other ministers of the gospel who have just divine insight. They've had the experience. They know the thinking. They know how to minister to those communities very well. Like there's a lady named Sophia Ruffin. I think that's her last name, Ruffin. If you follow her on Instagram or Facebook, you'll read her story. Oh my gosh, that woman 
transformed into this, I thought she was a man to be perfectly honest. And she was a woman the whole time. And then God worked through her, did all whatever it is that was done. And now she ministers effectively to those who are a part of that and who want to come out, right? God has given her the grace to effectively minister in that area. I don't touch it because I'm like, no, she's got that on lock. But my point is that, you know, when you get to the place where you can function in your particular grace, you are most effective there. And so I never want our teachings to cause us to become hostile towards individuals because we don't know <clears throat> their experience. We don't know other people's experience. I, I don't know what it's like to be a man. I don't minister to men. I, I don't know. I cannot teach a boy how to become a man. So I stick with what I know. That's why I have a women's ministry and a girl's ministry. And so when it comes to these things, we don't have to be hostile with folks, but when you want to challenge the ideas, do so in a way that will cause even them to think differently. And one of the ways you can do that is by asking them, where's your source? I need you to take me to the original source. I need you to take me to the first person to do this and tell me that they were able to produce the type of civilization that we have today. If they cannot do that, then you stick with your guns. You stick with your principles. You stick with your values. This is how you win. So beloved, that's what I wanted to share with you. This Sunday workshop, we'll continue to do these uh, Saturday, Sunday workshops for women. Um, because we want them to be empowered. But this is also an opportunity for us to invite you to join our women's ministry. For just $10 a month, you'll have more empowerment. Like uh, starting Monday, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about love and marriage inside that particular space. I'm going to talk about um, Dr. Miles Monroe's book, which is called Love and Marriage. It is such a powerful book on understanding the differences between men and women and what it really means to be married and how when we come together, we have to be more focused on the institution of marriage itself. And I add to the content that a couple ought to be also focused on the vision that God has given them. There is a purpose for you being with that spouse. There's a reason why you are there. And so by understanding that purpose and that vision, it helps you to avoid thoughts of divorce. It helps you to avoid unnecessary conflict. It puts you on the same page. And when you're working together to see that vision manifested, it reduces, like I said, it reduces conflict. You don't entertain petty arguments that would cause the, the, the vision to, to die. And so we're going to talk more about that. We'll also talk about finding your suitable. So uh, it's going to be a great time. And so again, I want to invite women who will be watching this video, whether on YouTube or inside the network, we invite you to join our ministry. Because of beloved givers and sponsors, we're able to deliver this type of ad advanced training for just $10 a month. We have sponsors, we have givers who have been so faithful towards the ministry, and they understand that we want to provide as much empowerment, um, either free or very low cost, to folks who will be coming in. So again, we invite you. So beloveds, that's all I wanted to share with you. I totally went over. I, I thought I was only going to be about 30 minutes, but child, I get to talking. When they just try and step over womanhood, I'd be like, ah, pull back, homie. So anyways, I bless you. I thank you all so very much. Again, oh, someone else just donated towards our ministry. If you would like to participate and be a blessing to what we're doing, please head over to paypal.me forward slash FK Ministries. You can make a donation of $10 or more. This helps to keep the ministry moving forward. I love you all so very much. Take care. Enjoy your Sunday. And uh, we're going to have a great week this upcoming week inside the Conscious Conservative Media Network. Take care.